Okay, so last time I drew some pictures with arrows going every which way and talked about the concept of a product. And products include tuples of contracts, the minimum of a bunch of numbers, the greatest common divisor of a bunch of numbers, um, mitochondrial eve, uh, the intersection of sets, and if you want to go a little farther afield, you have things like um, the sum of vector spaces, uh, the smash product of pointed sets, other such things. Um, in JavaScript, we looked at the prod n function that takes in an array of contracts and produces a new contract that expects an array, so right there, args is an array, of the same length, where we apply the ith contract to the ith argument, to, or rather the ith element of this array. Um, and by doing that, we can have different spots in the array of have different types. Um, then we also looked at prod s, where instead of being indexed by numbers, they're indexed by strings. And so again, we get a we get an object whose properties are functions, that is contracts, and we return a contract that expects an object whose properties pass the corresponding contract. Now in the, uh, in the last video, I also pointed out that by turning all the arrows around in the definition of a product, you could get a coproduct. So instead of pairs, we have uh, enumerations. And instead of minimum, we get maximum. Instead of intersection, we get union. Instead of GCD, we get least common multiple, and so on. Um, so here we're going to look at the JavaScript implementation of coproducts. So we're going to be given an array of contracts and produce a new contract. And we're going to represent the result as a two-element array. Item 0 is an index. We can think of this as the value of the enumeration in uh, C, or Java. And item 1 is a value satisfying the contract at that index. So again, here we get an array of contracts, right there. They should all be functions, of course. We cache the length, then we're given a pair that I'm calling choice. Choice should be an array. The zeroth item should be a natural number, 0, 1, 2, etc. We check that the length is 2, so this should be a pair. Then we check that the zeroth element is less than length, right? Because we go if we go from 0 up to length minus 1 are the are the admissible indices. So what do we return? Well, we echo back the zeroth element of choice, but then we apply the contract at that index to the value provided as the second element of the array. So for instance, if I said coprod and 
of int32 and string. This is a new contract that expects something either of the form 0 and something passing int32, so say 5, or something passing sorry, or something that begins with 1 and is a string. So in Scala, we call this either, and they use left and right instead of 0 and 1. So this would be left 5 and right high. So this is either an int32 or a string. We have a choice of which, um, which type to use for the second element of the array. And the first element of the array tells us which one we've chosen. Now just like before, where we had products indexed by strings, we can do that too in JavaScript. So var coprod s is a function oops, that takes a contract, uh, an object of contracts, That is, it's a hash map indexed by strings, and the, the keys are strings, and the values are functions. Then um, there's no notion of length of an object. Uh, so we return function choice. And choice should be a two element array, so we say choice should pass the array contract, and instead of having a natural number for the index, we're having a string as the index, choice bracket zero, this is the same. Instead of checking the range of choice 0, we just need to check if choice 0 is an own property of the provided, um, sorry, the provided object of contracts. So if sees.has own property choice Oh, and we want to do the negation. Choice zero. Then throw new type error unknown tag. Then we return. Again, a two element array where the first item is tag echoed back to us, but then we're applying the contract at the given tag. It's a string this time instead of a number, but we still use the bracket operator to look it up in the hash map. Applied to the value. It's the second, well, at position one in the given choice object. And that's it. So now we can say um, prod s x say i is an int S, oops, int 32. 
This is a string. Then we can provide either. A string that is a key that looks up the appropriate contract and applies it to the second value. So it's either an integer, oops, or it's a string. I suppose I should probably use consistent quoting. There we go. So in particular, if we wanted to be more like uh, scholars either, we could call this left and right. So this would be left five. and right high. So left and right being the, the two choices um, in an either type in Scala. But we can use, of course, any tags that we wish when doing this. Now one interesting thing Over here is that prod n expects an array, but the array can be of any length. If we provide an empty array, the only thing that the resulting contract will accept is another empty array. And so we could rewrite the maybe monad as. Oops, yes. this. So now, instead of getting a maybe object that's either an instance of none or an instance of some, we're going to be able to say maybe int32, and this thing is equivalent to it's equivalent to prod s none prod n brackets sum 32 and this thing accepts stuff of the form either none and the only thing that none accepts, I mean that this contract accepts, or some integer. So this is an alternate implementation of the maybe monad, or the maybe functor. You'd still have to define unit and flatten in order to turn it into a monad. 